What's up everyone, welcome back to the vlog. And for this episode, I'm gonna continue showing you my workflow with star trails that I took at Manasquan Reservoir, New Jersey. Now the clouds did roll in, which interfered with my pictures. However, I was able to salvage around 150 photos to create a decent star trail picture and video. So first, let me just tell you some settings I use with my Nikon D800s. I shot these with ultra wide lenses, the Nikon 14 to 24 and the Tamron 15 to 30 set at around 18 millimeters to avoid some branches that were in my composition. My ISO was set to 640 at F5 with a shutter of 25 seconds. Since the light pollution was so bad, I was able to keep my ISO really low and I decided to set my cameras at F5 to give me more depth of field and corner to corner sharpness. Now don't get me wrong, the Tamron and Nikon lenses are fantastic at 2.8, however they're even better if you could stop them down a little bit. Now if you've never done star trail photography before, there's two ways to do it that I know of. The first way to do it that I personally like the most is to take a couple hundred consecutive photos and an exposure of 25 or 30 seconds and then blend those together using a program like Star Stacks or Photoshop. This allows you to edit out planes and small clouds a little easier and if something goes wrong, you can usually salvage most of your pictures like I had to do with Manasquan Reservoir. The second method is taking one or a few really long exposures using bulb mode. So for example, you'd use a really low ISO like 100 and a larger f-stop number to restrict the amount of light going into the camera sensor. And then you would take a half hour or one hour long exposure. The problem with this is if your settings are wrong, you can blow out your shot and overexpose the image so everything is all white, or you could even do the opposite and underexpose in which everything comes out way too dark. The other downsides are possibly getting camera shake and you just wasted a whole hour because some wind decided to mess up your shot, or if you accidentally shine some lights into the camera during that really long exposure, and sometimes cameras even overheat and get hot pixels because how hot the sensor gets from doing extremely long exposures. So needless to say, a lot of people stop using this particular method. Whichever method you decide to use, you'll need an intervalometer, which may be built into your camera body already, like many Nikons. So if you own a Nikon, it's usually under menu, shooting menu, and then interval timer shooting. Under here, choose the number of shots you want to take. So let's say 300 photos and then choose an interval. So for example, my photos were 25 second long exposures. So I want to choose an interval that is slightly longer than that. So for a 25 second exposure, I typically go with 26 or 27 second intervals. This allows the camera to take a 25 second exposure and then gives the camera a couple seconds in between to write that image onto the SD card before taking the next shot. If I set my interval at 25 seconds, it won't take the next exposure because it did not have enough time to write the information onto the SD card or CF card, whatever you're using. Now, if you're taking 25 second exposures and you set your interval to 30 seconds, that'll create large gaps in your star trail. So try to keep it around one or two seconds longer than your exposure time max. And if you don't have a built-in intervalometer for your camera, then you'll need to purchase one that looks something like this. Just make sure whatever one you get is compatible with your camera body and you'll be good to go. Now that all the information's out of the way, let's cue the intro and jump onto the computer. What's up everybody, welcome to the tutorial part of my photography and uh, this is going to be in two parts. One where I discuss how I edit my still images like removing the plane trails and cleaning up the foreground and then the second part of this video is going to be for those that are interested in making a time lapse of the stars and also a time lapse of star trails so I'll go into that as well. Maybe you already know how to edit the still photos and you want to learn how to do the video. You could jump right to that and not have to watch or scrub through all this footage to find it. So I'll leave that in the description below. Now let's jump into the still photography. Now what you see here is a set of pictures that I took from that night. Now I converted them to small JPEGs just so it doesn't bog down my computer system when I'm recording uh, and I'm using all these programs. It could eat up a lot of memory and and make everything really slow so that's why they're JPEGs but typically I would be working with raw images and also I just want you guys to take note of the numbering system 
make sure that you number your uh, images in this way. So do 001, 002, um, unless you have like a thousand photos, do 0001 and so on. Because if you number it any other way, you might run into issues when you go to open this in a program like Star Stacks, which I'll explain a little bit further. So yeah, that's just something I want to mention before I jump into this whole tutorial. Okay, now that I have all that out of the way, I'm gonna open up Lightroom. And to import, I'm just going to jump over to library and grab all the photos and drag them in. All right, so we're in the develop module and this is the first location that I stopped at that I nicknamed Sassafras. Now, I really like this creepy tree, but unfortunately I didn't realize how low these branches were going to be. And with the wind being so, so bad that night, um, they're just coming out super blurry and it was really hard to work in this tight section of the Manasquan Reservoir. Like it was really muddy. Uh, I had a lot of brush around me that I was kind of trying to squeeze in there with my vlog camera and my other cameras that I decided uh, was just too much work to try and figure out Polaris and get set up. So I decided to bail in this spot, but maybe I'll go back there in the future. And then I ended up over into a section that's a lot more open and I was able to shoot Polaris, you know, left justified for this photo. And then I shot it more to the center with my other camera. So we're just going to be looking at this set of photos here with the Polaris left justified. I'll show you what it looks like. So just like that. And uh, this is what it looks like with all the plane trails and the car trails. So I'll show you exactly how I got rid of that. But before we get into it, let me just scroll through these pictures and show you why we're not going to use all of them. So the weather report said it was supposed to be clear all night, but as you can see, it, it clearly wasn't. You know, it got really bad and covered the whole image, and um, it makes it a lot harder to create star trails when this happens. In fact, I'll show you what happens when we take this full set of images and we run it through a program like Star Stacks and the results that we'll get with all these clouds that were passing by. Now the one saving grace for this night was around 300. It starts to clear up. Yeah, so maybe even sooner. We'll just say like 290. From 290 all the way to 450, um, the skies were relatively clear and I was able to use them to create the star trails. But let me show you what happens when you use pictures with clouds in it. So I'm gonna open up Star Stacks. Star Stacks is a free program for those that don't have it. You just go on Google, type it in, and you can download it for your computer. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag all the images from that night into Star Stacks. Now there's a couple different blending modes, but the most popular one that a lot of people like to use is gap filling. And you could play around with comet mode and all the other stuff, but I'm just going to show you what happens when clouds start to interfere with your night images. So we're going to run this by hitting start processing. So I think you're starting to see the picture of uh, how these clouds are really messing things up. Okay, so there you have it. That's what happens with all these clouds. So that's why we don't want to use those images. I'm just going to reopen it. So let's do the images that barely have any clouds in them. So let's go to 290 to 450. And we'll just leave this on gap filling and all the other stuff alone. All right, so that looks pretty good. Obviously, there's a ton of plane trails in this, and I'm gonna show you an easy way to get rid of them compared to cloning, because cloning something like this would be extremely tedious. So we're gonna jump to Lightroom and then open the pictures up in Photoshop. So let's switch over back to that. All right, so I'm gonna select the photos I wanna bring over into Photoshop. Just right click and go to Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Obviously, if you're working with raw photos, this is going to take a little bit of time to import all these images. 
All right, so these are pretty small JPEGs, and you can see they're still taking a decent amount of time to go into Photoshop. So I'm going to speed up this process. But I just want to give you guys a recommendation that before you start working with large JPEG files or even raw files, and you know you have like two, three, or four hundred photos, you know, to create this star trail, do yourself a favor, shrink them down to tiny JPEGs, and then run them through star stacks and Photoshop and make sure everything looks and works correctly. And once you're happy with you know the results, then work with your raw files or your large JPEG files that are gonna take you know several hours of processing time because you don't want to put in on that time and effort just for the photo to not even look good in the end. So that's why I always recommend working with really small files and save yourself a headache. All right, so we have all our images in Photoshop now, and to create a star trail with them, it's pretty simple. You just have to select them all and change this from normal to lighten mode. So there we go, now we have our star trails, but we have a ton of uh, plane trails and car streaks right here. So how do we get rid of all these plane trails without cloning each and every freaking plane trail in the sky? Holy crap, that's a lot. I'll show you. I'm actually gonna put this back to normal for a second. And what I wanna do is hide all the layers. I'm gonna go to the bottom because there's less cars that are driving by in this section, so this is gonna be for the foreground. So first let me find some nice images that I could use. So there's a car in that one, car in that one. Okay, so this one's good, that's good, good. Um, we only need five, between five and 10, it really depends on um, how, how high your ISO was that night. Mine was pretty low, it was at 640, so I don't need that many images to stack. So I'll just use five. So what I'm gonna do is copy these images by dragging them right down to here. And now what I wanna do is convert these copied images into a smart object. So we're gonna right click on them and go to convert to smart object. Okay, so once it's done converting into a smart object, go to layer, smart objects, stack mode, mean. And if we zoom in here, you can see the water is a lot more smooth compared to a single exposure. It reduced some noise that was in there as well. And yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. So I'm actually just gonna rasterize that layer and bring it to the top of all the other layers. We're gonna blend this foreground with the star trail images later on after we get rid of the plane trails. So I'm just gonna hide this layer for now. Hide the rest of these layers. We're gonna turn them back on really quick. To change them to lighten mode. And let's hide them. Okay, so we're gonna work our way from the bottom all the way up to the top. So let's turn on this layer. And what you wanna do is grab your brush tool and choose black. And make sure it's at 100% opacity. We'll do a pixel size of 12. And let's zoom in here and start to paint anything that is a plain trail black. Now because we're using lighten mode, it allows the starlight to shine through to each layer, but anything that's black won't shine through. So let's click on the next layer. You see how that plane trail just disappears? Now we just have to continue doing this on every other layer that the plane is passing through. Okay, so I'm gonna do this really quickly and I know I'm gonna miss some of the plane trails, but it's just to show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm actually gonna speed up this process uh, so you don't have to see me do every picture. Now what's cool about this, it'll actually work on some clouds as well.
Okay, so I'm not going to do every photo. You get the general idea. It's a lot faster than cloning out all these plane trails and kind of distorting the stars. Sometimes that happens when you try to use the clone tool. Um, painting black is so much faster and easier. And yeah, you have to go photo by photo. But you know, it really shouldn't take you that long depending where you live. Obviously, I'm in New Jersey, so I have Philly, Newark Airport, and uh, also JFK in New York City. So there's just a ton of planes in this area. So it's not the best for doing night photography to begin with, but this will help you get rid of plane trails relatively easily. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is change out the foreground. You know, I want that nice smooth water and get rid of these car trails. So what I'm gonna do is turn on this layer that has my silky smooth water. And we're gonna create a layer mask by clicking this button right here. Grab my paintbrush. And make sure it's on black. And we're gonna increase this brush size. Just remember that black reveals and white conceals. So I'll leave it at 100 and I'm just gonna start painting away. Now as I get closer to this tree line, I'm actually gonna make my brush a little smaller. And not go down too far because I don't wanna bring in those car lights. And you could reveal your mask by pressing the backslash button. And that way I make sure I paint all the area that I want. Alright, so that looks pretty good. And you see these lights down here. If they're a distraction or if you have other small distractions in your foreground, feel free to zoom in and then grab either the spot healing brush or the healing brush and you could sample an area and then just paint them away. All right, so you get the idea. All right, so once you're satisfied, you could save this out as a JPEG or a TIFF. I recommend a TIFF because it gives you more editing capabilities when you bring it back into Lightroom. Um, just make sure you're also working with copies of images. A lot of times when you're dealing with Photoshop, it's pretty easy to do something that's destructive to the image. So if you're working with a copy, you don't have to worry about it as much because you know you have the originals and you can always you know, recreate something better in the future. So that's just a good practice to, to do. Okay, so that wraps up part one of this tutorial. Next, we're gonna be talking about turning all these images into a time-lapse and then how to turn them into a star trail time-lapse. Coming up next. All right, so this is part two of my tutorial and we're gonna talk about turning your images into a time-lapse. Now, there's additional software you will need to do this. I like to use a program called LR Time-lapse, but uh, you could also use Adobe Premiere and I think you could do it in Final Cut Pro as well. Now, there's a way to do a time-lapse using Slideshow. You have to download some presets from the internet and typically they're free, but I think they're limited to 720p. So if you want to do anything larger than a 720p video, then you're going to have to invest in additional software. So I have a bunch of JPEGs I'm going to be using just to kind of speed up the process of this video instead of using my RAWs, but uh, you get the general idea. So you want to make sure you have a folder with your images and just the images that you plan on using for a time lapse. Don't have a mix with other things. So I want to find those images in LR time lapse and click on that folder. Now I'm just going to use a basic workflow because um, you know it wasn't during golden hour or anything like that. It was just at nighttime, and we're going to do a keyframe wizard, and that will put a keyframe at the beginning and the end. Or, and if you don't have one at the end, just make sure you add it in there. Those are the two images we're going to be editing. Now when we adjust these photos, everything in between will automatically adjust to the settings that are needed to gradually change over the course of this time lapse, which is pretty cool. So just make sure you hit save. And before we drag it to Lightroom, you can actually preview the time lapse right here. As you can see, there's a ton of clouds that pass through in the beginning of this time lapse, but then eventually it clears up. 
You know, I love when clouds are passing by at night, but not if you're trying to do star trail photography. All right, so that's what our time lapse will look like without editing our pictures, but let's do some basic edits. So drag them over to Lightroom. Make sure you're in library. And hit import. Now if we change this to keyframes, it's going to bring up the first and last image. And let's just do some basic edits to these images. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy here. You know, there's a lot of light pollution, that's why it's looking very bluish, purple. So I could try and get rid of that by making it warm. Okay, I'm just going to leave it right there for now. These clouds are all orange because of the light pollution that's reflecting off of them, which is pretty nuts. Welcome to New Jersey, people. Okay, so I'm not going to go too crazy with this picture. It's, you know, it's just a basic night scene. So I'm just going to copy and then we're going to paste everything that I did on that first image to the last image. And if I want to make some adjustments, I can. So maybe I'll make it a little cooler. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm not going to go crazy. This is more about how to turn this into a time lapse, not how to edit your photo. Now, the next thing we can do is apply a 16 by 9 crop. So let's put it right around here. Then right click on your photos. And what you want to do is go to metadata, metadata, save metadata to files. Now if we jump back to LR time lapse and hit reload. It's going to apply our adjustments to the first and last image. And then what we want to do is hit auto transition, which applies our adjustments to those as well. And then hit deflicker if we need to. This wasn't really flickering much, so I'm not going to go crazy with it. Once you've done that, hit save. Then we jump back to Lightroom. And this time you want to select full sequence. For the rest of the files, go to metadata, read metadata from files, and it's going to update them with the new settings. So as you see, they're all starting to adjust to the new crop size and change of color. So once they're all updated, you're going to select all the images, go to file, export. All right, so right here for LR time lapse, I could export it as a 4K video, and I just have to specify where I want to save to and the folder name. So I'm just going to leave everything as it is and hit export. So I'm going to speed up this process for you guys. All right, so once it's done exporting from Lightroom, you should get a render dialog box in LR time lapse. And here you could select the size of the video that you want to export it out as. I'm just going to do 1080p for the sake of this video. And there it is, folks. So it's really. Okay, so that's how you do a basic time lapse. Now, how do you do a star trail time lapse? So first, we're going to close out this for now. And we'll even clear out Lightroom. Just going to 
going to delete these. Okay, so to do the Star Trail time lapse, I have to start off with Photo 300 and go on from there because anything before that, it's just too cloudy and those clouds are going to mess up the time lapse for a Star Trail video. So we're going to just use 150 photos to do this. Um, let me just minimize that. And the way I like to do it is using Star Stacks. So open up Star Stacks, which is a free program that you guys could download. And I'm going to drag Photo 300 to 450. Now what I like to do for a Star Trail video is Comet Mode, Long Trails. And then what you want to do is hit Save After Each Step. This is going to create the files that we need to create the Star Trail video. So I'm okay with the name, that's fine. All right, so you just wanna create a folder to put the images in separate from the original folder that they are coming from. So desktop, Star Trail Comet. All right, so now these images will be saved in this folder. So we're gonna hit run. The reason I like to do comet mode is because if there are some clouds or even planes, you know, as this continues to, to spiral, the clouds and the planes will start to fade away. Now if you ever want to do a time lapse of star trails without any planes in it, you have to do the daunting task of removing all those plane trails photo by photo. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to close star stacks. Let me just check to make sure they're all here. Yep, 150 photos. So I'm gonna open up LR time lapse again. Go to basic workflow, Star Trail Comet. And this is the same process that we just did before. So I'm just gonna hit play and see what it looks like. And you can see it's doing the Star Trail Comet time lapse. It's short, it's only five seconds because I couldn't use all those photos, but um, this is how you would do it. So you could do your keyframe wizard just like before. Just hit close that out. You don't need to worry about that. Hit save. Go to library. Drag these in. import all right so I'm not going to make any changes to these images I'm fine with the way they are this is just you know to show you guys how to do it so I'm going to select them all and go file export okay LR time-lapse I'll speed this up for you guys Just do 4K. All right, there you have it. That's how I create my Star Trail time lapse videos in comet mode. You could also use it without comet mode, but I just like it because it fades out some of the plane trails and um, it looks pretty cool. So please like and subscribe and definitely click on the links below. It helps me out. Take care. Bye bye.